Stannis Baratheon was born the second son of Lord Stephen Baratheon and Lady Cassana Estermont. At the age of 13, he lost both of his parents, and on that day abandoned his faith in the Seven, vowing that God so cruel as to take his father and mother in sight of their children would never have his worship. He grew into a hard man, stubborn but honest, and unbending in his desire for justice. During Robert's rebellion, he held the fortress of Storm's End for his elder brother Robert against the army of Mace Tyrell. Stannis and his people avoided starvation only because of Davos Seaworth, a smuggler who managed to bring in some food. After Ned Stark, an ally of his brother, came and lifted the siege. Stannis rewarded Davos with lands and a knighthood, but true to his unyielding ways, also removed the tips of his fingers on one hand as punishment for the crime of smuggling. Davos Seaworth became known as the Onion Knight. By maintaining the siege of Storm's End and refusing to yield, one of the largest armies in the war was kept out of the fighting, giving the Baratheons a significant advantage. Afterward, Stannis was tasked with the capture of Dragonstone and the Targaryen children. Though he captured the island and the fortress. He was too late. The children of Mad King Ares managed to escape. Despite all he accomplished, his brother Robert gave him no praise and instead blamed him for letting the Targaryen children go. When Robert became king, Stannis as next in line for the throne was named Lord of Dragonstone, with Robert believing the island would need a strong ruler given its history of loyalty to the Targaryens. However, Stannis saw this action as a slight against him and believed he was being punished by the king. Their youngest brother Renly would be given the more stable and rich territories of Storm end. Stannis was named Master of Ships and given a seat on the small council, acting as one of the main advisors to Jon Arryn, Hand of the King. During the Greyjoy Rebellion, Stannis led the Royal Navy against the Iron Fleet, defeating them and then taking the island of Great Wick. On his wedding night to Lady Selyse Florent, King Robert would deflower one of her cousins, Delena Florent, on their marital bed, there conceiving Robert's bastard son, Edric Storm. Though Stannis hoped for a male heir, his wife would produce only a girl. They named Shireen Baratheon. She would develop a disease known as grayscale, which would leave her disfigured. Over the years, Stannis would begin to suspect that the children of King Robert were not his own. He confided in Jon Arryn and they began an investigation. Eventually, they learned the truth that the three Baratheon children were in fact bastard children of incest between Cersei and Jaime Lannister. But Jon Arryn would die before they could go public, as would Lord Eddard Stark, his successor. And so after the death of King Robert and the coronation of King Joffrey, Stannis would send out ravens informing all of the Seven Kingdoms that the crown had been usurped. Civil war had now come to Westeros in the form of the War of the Five Kings, with Robb Stark declaring himself King of the North, Balin Greyjoy declaring himself King of the Iron Islands, Joffrey Baratheon in King's Landing, and his younger brother Renly Baratheon declaring himself King of Westeros in Highgarden. Stannis was initially badly outnumbered both in men and resources, so in order to balance the scales, Stannis was now working with a Red Priestess of R'hllor, who had proven her powers with impressive fire and shadow magics, and converted Stannis, along with much of his household, to the faith of the Red God. She claimed that he was Azor Ahai reborn, the legendary hero of prophecy, and so she would use her magic to remake Lightbringer, the fabled weapon of the hero. And while it glowed with much light, it did not give off the heat said to come from the original Sword. Using the magic of the Red Priestess Melisandre, they assassinated his brother Renly, who had falsely declared himself king, and took the castle of Storm's End. They would then attack King's Landing at the Battle of the Blackwater, but here Stannis would be defeated. Having feared that others would give her credit for the victory, Melisandre was left behind, and the army of Stannis Baratheon was forced back by the timely arrival of Tywin Lannister and a Tyrell army. After this defeat, Davos Seaworth would become Hand of the King. In need of a new plan, Melisandre asked Stannis to give her Edric Storm, the bastard son of the deceased King Robert, claiming his blood could be used to wake the stone dragon and give Stannis victory. But he would not sacrifice the boy, and so instead the Red Priestess used three leeches to remove small amounts of blood and performed a magic ritual, calling on the deaths of the false kings, Joffrey Baratheon, Robb Stark, and Balin Greyjoy, all of which would die soon after. Following the advice of his hand, Sir Davos Seaworth, Stannis would travel north, deciding to abandon their holdings in the south in order to rescue the Night's Watch from the Wildlings and conquer the north. Sir Davos was sent to White Harbor to negotiate an alliance with House Manderley. His army would arrive just as the Wildlings, led by King Mance Raider, were gathered at the wall. They crushed the Wildling 
forces, and nine of every ten would pledge fealty to Stannis. Though he sentenced Mance Raider to death, Melisandre would use her magic to switch the king beyond the wall with a wildling named Rattleshirt in order to use the former king for her own schemes. Stannis would ally with Jon Snow, Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, and Jon would give him advice on how best to take the North from the Ironborn and the Boltons. Stannis would go through the mountains following Jon's advice and gain the allegiance of the Mountain Clans, who were loyal to the Starks. He then took Deepwood Mock and granted the lands back to their traditional lords in House Glover, thereby gaining their loyalty as well. He would also gain the loyalty of the Mormonts, part of House Umber and House Karstark, though the Karstarks were secretly working for the Boltons, a fact discovered by Jon Snow, who sent a raven to inform Stannis. King Stannis Baratheon was last seen setting off with his ever-growing army to face Ramsay Bolton in battle at Winterfell.